Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over this Honda 3813. I just bought this last week. I bought it not running. We're going to go over some of the things to look for when you're buying stuff that don't run. Uh, kind of go over the lawnmower's condition. Go over some of the common problems on this model. And just kind of look it over. This is going to be more kind of a fixing video. Also, at the end, by the end of this video, I either hope to have it running or decide what to do with it. Uh, maybe the engine's blowing on it. Maybe it's going to be a parts lawnmower. I don't really know. We're going to go through it together and see what we find out. I also have the hood for it. It came with the hood off. You can see the 3813 there. 38 is the width of the deck. 13 is the engine horsepower. That's where they get 3813. Uh, oh yeah, two cylinder liquid cooled engine. That's kind of one of the reasons why I like this more and I kind of chose it for a project. The hood is not perfect, but on a mo used more, you usually do not get perfect. Here you can see the radiator. It's also a five speed. Here's your parking brake. You can see the seat is dusty. You would think after pulling it home like 70 miles an hour, you think all the dust would have blown off, but it didn't. This is also shaft drive for the rear end. That's also something that's nice because when they are belt drive, a lot of times that belt breaks down in a couple of years and it's kind of a pain in the butt to change. Here's your deck height adjustment. Okay, one thing you want to check when you're buying something used like this, you want to check the oil. Now, as you can see, it's got oil, it's black. Black is actually not a bad thing because if it's clear, they might have tried working on it. Maybe they ran it out of oil and then they topped it back off. So clear is not always a good thing. They might have tried to cover something up. And of course, if it's low, well, they might have ran it out of oil and just sold it the way it is. So yeah, you can kind of see here. Oil levels actually need to be a hair high. You always want to. Don't really smell weird. Okay, you can see at the coolant reservoir here, it's cold, it's low, but you look here, they had the hoses off for the radiator. So I'm thinking there is, yeah, there's probably no coolant in it. Then a lot of your wires here are disconnected so I don't know if they were going to pull the engine or what they were trying to do or troubleshoot it but it's got no battery but when you're buying something used you got to kind of look it over and 
try to think what it's actually worth to you and you always got to kind of be under the impression that you might not be able to get it running or the engine might be blown so you don't want to overspend on it because if you pay a running price for something that ain't running and you find out the engine's blown you now own somebody else's big mistake and you're probably going to lose money. If you pay like parts price for it. Now say you can get it running. You're going to have to probably stick some parts in it. You probably got a good chance to make some, make a little money on it. You're going to be out some time, some labor. But hopefully you can make a little money on it. You can see here the fuel lines are disconnected. It's not a bad idea to have a book for something like this too. Or a different one to look at. Okay, the gas tank. As you can see is empty. There's a little bit of crud in it, but it's not just too bad. Probably a little cleaning. It's better... Actually, something that's used sometimes is better. It has no gas in it. It's even got a ga gas gauge right there under the seat, so you don't have to take the cap off. And if you look... The gas cap gasket don't look too bad. This one here is off of a John Deere. And I'm pretty sure this one, this gasket on here is not ethanol resistant. And if you look, the ethanol kind of started breaking the rubber down and it started cracking and that thing is junk. That's why you get this older stuff. You shouldn't be putting ethanol in it because it was designed before ethanol was around. I just set the hood on to get a little more of an idea what it looks like. It actually looks pretty cool. One of the things I like about it though is it's it's built good. It's a smaller mower that's built good, which is very uncommon. Now it's now they want to see how much horsepower they can throw in there and sell you something that's pretty cheap and it's going to break down relatively quick. Another thing you want to check on something that you buy used is to see if it's if the engine turns over. Here you can see it's turning over. That's a good thing. You can also see that there is a belt missing that drives the deck. So that'll be something I'm going to have to buy on this more. Okay, let's take a look at the air filter. See what that looks like. Things seen better days that pre filter is pretty much totally shot. The rest don't look that good. Oh, yeah, that thing's breaking apart in my hands. Wow. 
probably get the whole works. All the way. Is there a part number? Oh yeah, there's a part number on it. Another thing about the engine in here, this is designed, it's an actual Honda engine. It ain't like your ordinary uh, Briggs and Stratton, Kohler, Tecumseh, stuff like that. This one runs more like a car. That was one of the selling points on this lawnmower. Yep, I got the air cleaner back together. So now I'm going to look at, take the spark plugs out and see if, it's kind of overexposed there, see if the uh, pistons move up and down just in case somebody ran out of oil and broke a connecting rod but didn't come through the block. I've seen that already. Now you can see there's some dirt in by the spark plugs. So I'm gonna have to get the air compressor and blow that out a little bit. I don't wanna get dirt in there. This might be my good lawnmower, I don't know. So anyway, a lot of lawnmowers have like V-twins. Uh, it'd be vertical V-twins, a lot of them. Some of them are, some of them I believe are, yeah, horizontal V-twins on your bigger John Deere's that are gas. This one's actually an inline tool, meaning both, both the pistons are basically going up and down in a line. Okay, so we want to make sure we can see that the piston's going up and down. I'm going to try and get that on video. So basically what I did is I took the spark plugs out. I don't know, can you see it in there? kind of hard to get this because a lot of times it wants to get overexposed and So you can see both pistons are going up and down, which is what we want. It looks kind of dry in there though. Might have to sh shoot a little uh, oil in there so it, hopefully the rings, rings are not going to stick to the pistons and go out to the cylinder wall and usually when something don't run like this for a while it kind of has to reseat the rings and like get if there's any rust on the light rust on the cylinder walls it has to get that off but if it had a broken connecting rod the piston wouldn't move and 
and you could have had one one broken connecting rod and one moving so it could have ran off of one I've seen that already uh, but anyway well it could have had two broken connecting rods or been totally like shot but it looks pretty good The starter down there, it's electric start. I should say battery start, it's not like a snow blower where you gotta plug it into a household current or anything. But yeah, the block looks, I don't see any oil coming out of it. I don't see any holes in it. So it looks pretty good. The one thing that was kind of the downfall of this thing is it had a timing belt on it. And you can see there's the cover, timing belt cover. And the mice would come and get in there and build a nest. And then if it picked up that nest and it got in, got in there, it would jump time. And that would make the engine not run. So we were gonna go and hook the wiring up on this thing and give her a test fire, see what we got going, but we kind of ran into problems. If you look at the starter here, there's no, there's nothing coming out of it. And there is no switch, or some people call them a solenoid, to actually charge charge the uh, starting system and then if you look there's a big burn spot on the on the armature So the starter is basically junk. By the time, oh, and there's no brush holders. So by the time you'd get the parts to get this starter fixed, you're better off just buying a different one. Okay, so to get this starter out on this model, your bolts are right here. One right here and one right here. But you gotta pull the flywheel to get to them. And while you're there, you might as well check the timing. And this one's actually one cog off, so it probably would've ran, but it wouldn't have ran good. If it ran at all, I don't know. We never really got it running, cause well, you couldn't start it. And it is ripped down. There, there's two ways to do this. You could pull the engine out and then pull all that stuff out. Or you can take it apart like this, take that timing cover off, and go this way. The benefit of doing it this way is you'll be able to put it part ways back together and actually try it. So... Like, we ain't going to put all the seat back on and all that good stuff. We'll kind of put the dash back together enough to get the wiring harness hooked up, and then we'll, we'll try it and see what it's going to do. Okay, we're going to try her. We kind of have her somewhat together. Should be enough to run it. We gotta hold this switch in for the uh, PTO. No, the did not go through the carb, so no idea what to expect there. Choke it too. Which one even is the choke? This one.
Don Marie Wall. Ja. No. Oh, I got it. I'll, I'll hold the switch. You gotta pull it over a little bit and then not that it should go on. I think so. Well, yeah. Okay, here we go.